Hello, great to see you again here in Ad Filtering Dev Summit. A year ago, I shared the HES prototyping status in the previous summit with Brian, Stank, and Andrea. Uh, in this time, uh, Eric Meyer is with me. I will briefly share the HES implementation status first, and Eric will show the useful use cases with interesting examples. Okay, uh, I will start the first part. Uh, I'm going to share the HES implementation status first, and then I will show the functional coverage uh, limitations and performance of HES pseudo class in uh, Chrome browser. Uh, at the end, I will briefly share the cases that can perform inefficiently that can be optimized later if needed. Okay, I think I don't need to ask this question since most people may already know the answer. Yes, we can use has in Chrome. Mm, it is enabled by default since the version 105. Uh, the Chrome 105 passed all the web platform tests at first, but uh, there was a change in the forgiving parsing behavior. I will share it later in the limitation section. Uh, we already know that Safari has supported has sudo class since the version 15.4. And the great news is that Firefox also started their implementation to support it. By using has sudo class, we can remove some JavaScript code blocks. Uh, previously, we need to add um, event handlers so that uh, we, uh, we find the target element and change the class values to apply new style rules to the target element. Uh, now we can remove this JavaScript logic by using has sudo class in the style rules. Unless you use has sudo class in extreme cases, uh, the change usually adds no noticeable performance degradation. In the last section, I will share some cases that can perform inefficiently. So what can we do with has? I think the simplest answer is that uh, we can change the subject of a relationship. We can select parent instead of child by moving on the right side of the parent's compound selector in the has pseudo class so that the parent's compound selector becomes the terminal compound selector. And this is same to the ancestor descendant relationship and also same to a complex relationship. The interesting point is that by using has pseudo class, uh, we can define more complex relationship that has been impossible previously uh, with the other existing selectors. And same to the other logical combinations, we can use has with other pseudo classes. As you can see here, uh, you can use has uh, has pseudo class inside logical combinations such as is or, or not. And it is also possible to use the logical combinations inside has. Actually, we can use almost all pseudo classes inside has. Or we can select the list items that have a descendant image only when the image is a second child of its parent. And we can select the list items that have a descendant span element only when the mouse pointer is over that span element. There are infinite number of complex and tricky variations we can define. For example, by using is inside has and put a complex selector inside is, uh, we can match the has argument beyond the has anchor element. Current Chrome implementation supports all valid has usages. So we need to know what the what the invalid has pseudo classes usages are. Uh, due to the performance and complexity concerns, 
a nesting has inside has is not allowed by the spec. So the has argument will be dropped if it contains has. And similar to the limitations on the other logical combinations such as is or where, all the current pseudo elements are not allowed inside has by the spec. But there can be a future pseudo elements that can be allowed inside has since the spec opened the possibility. Uh, using has is not allowed inside pseudos when the pseudos only accept compound selectors. Uh, for example, uh, using complex selector inside slotted or host is not allowed. Mm, same to this, uh, using has is not allowed inside these pseudos. Mm, we, can uh, we can understand this easily by the fact that has pseudo class implies a relationship between two or more elements. Uh, using has inside these pseudos makes exactly the same problem of using complex selectors inside those pseudos. For your information, mm, there is an ongoing discussion, discussion of allowing complex selectors inside slotted and host. But it seems that it is a complicated discussion since it can cause performance issues that are slightly different for uh, different browser engines. Mm, similar to the other selectors, using has is not allowed after pseudo elements. And visited always doesn't match inside has to avoid leaking uh, visitedness information. This is about a workaround that applied after the Chrome 105 released. Uh, after the release, some jQuery related bugs were reported, um, which are related to the jQuery behavior of checking has validity uh, that conflict with the forgiving parsing behavior. To avoid this, a uh, workaround was applied by referring the current WebKit behavior. So if all the has argument are dropped, so uh, there is no argument in the has, uh, the has will be invalid instead of valid but not match. Mm, this is actually confusing and incorrect forgiving parsing behavior. Moreover, mm, this is not a solution that covers all the cases of the jQuery problem. Uh, the spec already provides a way of validating forgiving parsing selectors. So we can use add supports to detect errors in forgiving parsing. So I think the workaround will probably be reverted later after some related issues are addressed properly. Okay, let's check the performance now. I will show the performance by splitting it into two contexts. Uh, for the first, um, I will show the has testing performance. In this context, the key is minimizing the number of elements in the has argument checking traversal. Testing a has pseudo class on an element is a heavy operation due to the number of has argument se selector testing operation. Uh, Testing a has pseudo class for a child relationship performs better than um, for a descendant relationship since uh, we only need to check the children of a has anchor element instead of checking all the descendants. The combinators inside has defines the relationship so uh, they can affect the argument testing traversal type. And the number of elements in the argument testing traversal can vary depending on the uh, traversal type. Uh, even for the same relationship, has anchor element position can affect the performance since it affects the size of the argument traversal. Uh, generally, the deeper the has anchor element is or the later child position the has anchor element has, the smaller the traversal size is. 
Uh, as a summary, um, combinators in has argument and has anchor element position can affect the number of elements in the argument testing traversal. And the number of elements in the argument testing traversal affect has testing performance. Or a single has testing time on a single element scales almost proportional to the uh, number of elements in the argument testing traversal. But it cannot be linear when a single has can be tested on multiple elements within a single operation, such as JavaScript selector query API or, uh, or the style resolving operation. This can be worse when we use has sudo class at non-subject position. To make this linear, we applied a cache approach. So now a single has testing time is always almost proportional to the number of elements in the document, regardless of the number of has anchor element. Okay, next is the has restyle performance. Uh, in this context, the key is minimizing the number of elements to be invalidated since a resolving style of the invalidated element is uh, a heavy operation. To restyle elements for a DOM mutation, at first we need to find the target elements and invalidate its style. And then the style of the invalidated element will be recalculated with the matching style rules. Uh, for the traditional selectors, uh, we need to traverse tree to downward for invalidation and traverse tree to upward to test selectors in style rules for recalculation. Uh, for this style rule class A, class B, when class A is added to an element, we need to find element with class B from the descendants of the changed element and invalidate them. Then style engine test the selector in the style rule to check whether the rule can be applied to mm, the element. While testing the selector, the class A selector will be tested on mm, the ancestors of the invalidated element. But this is same to the has sudo class, but the traversal di uh, direction is different. For this style rule, class A has class B. When class B is added to an element, uh, we need to find the element with class A from the, the ancestor of the changed element and invalidate them. Then style engine tries to test the selector in the style rule. Uh, while testing the selector, the has argument selector will be tested on the descendants of the invalidated elements. When we use has in non-subject position, these two traversal directions are combined. So for both invalidation and recalculation, we need both upward and downward traversal. In this context, we need to reduce the number of elements in, uh, to be invalidated for uh, better performance. So we added some flags to the DOM elements to handle has invalidation efficiently by referring the dynamic restyle flags approach, which, which has been already applied to the Chrome to handle the invalidation of the other pseudo classes such as hover or nth chart. While testing on an element, style engine marks the flags of the has anchor element and the elements in its traversal scope so, so that um, we can traverse from the changed element to the has anchor element by following the path uh, that the flag indicates. Uh, restyling with a single has pseudo class in uh, style rules performs well. For the same ancestor descendant relationship between the two class values, restyling the ancestor el element shows better performance than restyling the descendant element. Considering that a non-subject has invalidation requires combi combining the two traversal directions, even if we use has in non-subject position, it shows a reasonable restyle performance that is similar to the sum of the two invalidation in different direction. 
but restyling with multiple heads are not fully optimized yet. So it's good to know when it might not be optimal. Uh, it might not be optimal when we use head pseudo class for an indirect sibling descendants relationship since uh, we haven't yet filtered out um, unnecessary subtree traversal in the relationship. And it might not be optimal when there are multiple subject position heads in style rules and there is no common anchor element between the head pseudo classes. It might not be also optimal when there are multiple non-subject position heads in style rules and there are some common anchor element between the pseudo classes but uh, there is no common subject element between the style rules. And at last we have a similar but more complex case. Compared to the previous case, this case have one more condition. So it might not be optimal when there are multiple non-subject position heads in style rules and there are some common anchor element between the head pseudo classes, but there is no common subject element between the style rules. And uh, we need to check compounding condition of a certain mutation to differentiate the subject element of the uh, rules to be invalidated. To prioritize these uh, remaining enhancement, uh, we need some feedback from public. So uh, please let us know how common and important these cases are and how critical they are to their performance. Okay, this is the last of my slide. Thank you for listening. I'll pass the turn to my colleague, Eric Meyer. Hello, I'm Eric Meyer, and I'm a developer advocate at Agalia. So for the last little while, Adblock Plus has had uh, the ABP has, or the dash ABP has, uh, pseudo pseudo class, as it were, um, made possible by a JavaScript polyfill. Well, thanks to work basically by Byung-woo and uh, Agalia in general, this is now going to be replaced with an actual CSS pseudo class from the CSS specification. Now, Byung-woo did talk about the current support status, but I wanted to make clear just how recent and rapid the adoption of this new feature has been. So this was the status of browser support in late July of this year. You can see that uh, Chrome in, in Chrome, it was available behind a developer flag and planned for release in, in Chrome 105. And uh, the Safari folks the working on WebKit got the jump on us once they saw that we were working on uh, has for Chrome. They uh, decided they would uh, ship it more quickly, so they got it out in Safari 15.4. And there was no uh, indication of work happening in Firefox. So as I say, that was the state of browser support in late July of this year. It's about two and a half months ago. And this is the state of support as of late last month. Um, as byung Wu mentioned, Agalia's work on Chrome is now available in public releases of Chrome on desktop and mobile, uh, as well as in Chrome for Android. And uh, Safari continues to ship, uh, has support in WebKit for both desktop and mobile. And Firefox's work on has was, as of uh, just a few weeks ago, in the developer preview stage. It was uh, enabled behind a developer flag. And there are plans to move to public release by the end of the year. Now note I say plans, plans can change. Uh, it could be a little bit sooner than the very end of the year. It might be a little bit past the end of the year, but the end of the year is not that far away. So uh, hopefully that will that will uh, appear in public releases of, of Firefox and thus uh, Firefox for Android and any other code base that might uh, depend on the uh, Gecko rendering engine um, here in the next uh, very little bit. But, I mean, what's the big deal? You can say that A has B. Uh, so what? I mean, yeah, that that's kind of cool. But the thing is, there are so many patterns that has makes possible. I mean, this, is, this isn't just a parent selector, and it isn't even just an ancestor selector. You can select other elements based on a matching has element. You can create preceding sibling selectors, for example, and, and so much more. I mean, the list just goes on and on. 
Let's take a look at the first two of the examples from the previous slide, which are relatively simple. The first one here, P has A, will select any paragraph element that has an A element as one of its descendants. So all three of these paragraphs are selected because they have an A element as a descendant. It doesn't have to be a child. It can be a, a grandchild, a, a great-grandchild, a however, man, however many great levels there are child. Um, however many uh, you know, selectors are between the paragraph and the, and the anchor elements. Um, in the second case, uh, however, in the, in the bright side of the screen, by adding a child combinator, which is that greater than symbol, only paragraphs with a child IMG element will get matched. So the first case here matches because the only descendant element it has is a child IMG element. And the third case matches, the one at the bottom, because while the first IMG actually is a great-grandchild, there's a couple of spans around it, the second IMG is a child of the paragraph element. But the second example here isn't matched, because the only IMG element that descends from that paragraph isn't a child of the paragraph. The span gets in the way and prevents a match here because we added that child combinator, the greater than symbol, in this particular has selector. So you can see that what it's saying is looking for a, an IMG that has a child relationship to a P element. And this can be, you know, made more and more complex. In this situation, any element that has an adjacent sibling where that adjacent sibling is a script element that itself has a class of addjs, select the, the element that has that relationship. So this div gets selected because its adjacent sibling is a script element with a class of addjs. The second example, the div doesn't get matched because the main element is between the two. In fact, in this case, it's the main element that gets selected because we didn't say div has an adjacent sibling that's a script with a class of addjs. We said any element that has an adjacent sibling with a uh, that's a script with a class of addjs. So the div doesn't get matched in this situation, but the main does. Now in this uh, example, we're saying if a div has a child that is a script element, then select an adjacent sibling if that adjacent sibling has a class of advert. So here we have a div that has a script as a child. That script happens to have a class of addjs, but it, it's not necessary given the selector that was written here. So the div has a, a, a child script. And if it's adjacent sibling, the adjacent sibling of that div has a class of advert, then it gets selected like this iframe. And then at that point, you can apply whatever CSS you want. You can set it to display none so it completely disappears. You can absolutely position it uh, 9,999 pixels off the left side of the screen so that it similarly kind of disappears but yet is still technically part of the document. Uh, you could set its opacity to zero. You can invert it using a filter. Really, whatever you want to, want to do with CSS, you can do here. Now in this case, it's the same selector, but there's an image now between the div and the iframe, which means this iframe isn't going to get selected because there's something in between the div that has a child script and the class, uh, the element that has a class of advert. Now if you added a class of advert to the image, then it would get selected, but didn't do that here. So uh, this selector just isn't matching anything given this markup. Now, byung talked about how you can't have a has inside a has for performance reasons, um, although that may come in a future version of the CSS specification, uh, depending on uh, implementation experience uh, from uh, browser vendors or from third parties like Agalia that are working on uh, selector engines. Um, it's possible that in the future you will be able to nest has and has. But when I say the future, I mean, you know, in a year or two maybe. And that's if the problems can be overcome and the working group and all of the browser, various browser vendors agree to allow has inside of has. For now, that's not possible. But you can have multiple hases in, in a selector. They just can't be inside each other. So in this case, we're looking for any div that has a child script element. Just has to have a child script, that's all. And then if it's adjacent sibling, whatever element kind of element that is, has 
a descendant with a class of advert, then you select the actual div that has that class of advert. So each of the, of the sort of top level elements in this example are being operated on with has uh, conditions. So the first div, okay, it has a child of script, so it's sort of flagged internally as, yes, this div matches this condition. And then the second div is an, is an element that has a descendant with a class of advert. So it gets flagged as, yes, that this particular element satisfies this, this other condition. And then when you say, well, if an element satisfying the first condition is immediately followed by an element uh, matching the second condition, then uh, select that second element, which is what happens here. But one of the interesting things is that, um, well, in this case, we can say, hey, any div that has a following sibling, uh, and that following sibling is a script element with a class of add JS, and the div is inside of a header, then go ahead and select it. So that's what happens here is, you know, the, the div has uh, a following sibling that's a script element with a class of add JS, and it's a descendant of a header. Great, the div is selected. But we can use similar patterns just by shifting the has a bit to, and, and, and how this is set up so that this is, this is almost like an arbitrary sibling selector. So in this case, what it says is, if a header has a descendant that is a script element with a class of addJS, then select any of the header's descendants that have a class of advert, which in this case selects this class. Even though the script comes after the div with a class of advert, it's basically what we've set up here is arbitrary sibling. It can be a sibling before the div, um, in this case, before the element with the class of advert. It can be a sibling after the div with the class of advert. It doesn't really matter. Uh, just in this case, does the header have a script uh, with a class of add.js? Great. If it does, then any of its descendants with a class of advert, select those and apply whatever CSS you want. And we can make this even more generic to do something. Um, not sure if it's uh, super useful, but I imagine if there's a case where you want to do this, you will be really glad this exists. So this uh, selector is uh, quite a bit more universal as it were. This says any element that has a descendant that's a script with a class of add.js, select all of its children, like that. So all three of these elements are selected individually and then can have whatever CSS uh, you want applied to them. If you set them all to display none, it's kind of the same as if you just selected the header. But uh, if there's a situation where you want to uh, make the image and the div in this header like collapse down and then maybe be revealed on hover or focus or both, whatever. Um, but this selects uh, all of the descendants, all of the children, excuse me, of this element that has uh, a descendant with a uh, that's a script with a class of add.js, including the script itself. But you need to be careful here. This is an example of how I, I wrote this selector too broadly, really. And let me uh, explain how with a different example. So I took this markup example um, and this, uh, this selector from uh, a test page that IO set up to, to test the implementation of has. Basically what this says is div has a descendant and that descendant has an aria label attribute that with, an, with a value of sponsored. So if we look at this, any div that has a descendant with an aria label of sponsored. But that would be both of the divs we saw before plus this div with an ID of layout that's just inside the body and basically encloses the entire document. Now, I'm not saying you should mark up your document this way. I'm saying a lot of people do. And so by having said any div that has a descendant with an aria label attribute value of sponsored will get selected. So if the rest of this rule was uh, div has aria label sponsored display none, that's everything in the body. You just end up with a from a rendering point of view, an empty body, even if all of that markup is still there. So uh, you do need to be careful. Um, there's another thing I want to point out, though, before we go here. Uh, well, two things. One is that I forgot to close the parentheses on my has selector here. So uh, 
remember to do that. You know, that should be div colon has open parenthesis, then the aria label equals sponsored, and then a closed parenthesis, um, which I, I missed. So uh, my bad. Um, but the other thing is that we might look at this and say, hmm, any div, well, that div in the middle, in the, in the very uh, center, has a has a aria label attribute with a, a value of sponsored. Will, will this select that? No, it won't. Because remember, has is describing a relationship to the element that has the has attached to it. So if you wanted to select the div with the aria label sponsored, you wouldn't need has. You could already do that in like standard CSS2 since 1998. Um, but if you want to select a div that has a descendant or a child or an adjacent sibling or a following sibling or you know any other number of possible relationships, if you want the div to have some relationship to another element that has an aria label attribute with a value of sponsored, then you reach for has. So there's a lot that has makes possible. I mean, I've just barely scratched the very top few layers of paint on the surface of the possibilities of what uh, what has can do. Um, maybe a way to, to sort of keep in mind what it means is that it kind of means has relation, like B has a relationship to A. Um, you could also think of matches, uh, jQuery's matches, for those of you who are familiar with it, shares a lot of similarities to what has does in CSS. But you might ask yourself, okay, but we already had like a JavaScript polyfill to, to make this happen. Why do we need a CSS pseudo class? Um, why, why native CSS? Well, there are really three reasons and these are them. There's performance that, and that performance is about as good now as uh, JavaScript solutions. And this is the beginning of CSS has optimization. Uh, byung -woo talked about uh, future optimizations that have yet to be done. And yet without those optimizations in place, the CSS, the native CSS has, is about as performant as the uh, as, as old JavaScript uh, solutions that, that did basically the same thing. The performance is only going to improve as new optimizations are found and implemented for has itself, as well as for CSS selector engines in general. Um, there's the portability that lets you take your ad blocking patterns, the, the structural patterns, the has patterns that you've created in ad blocking and reuse them in other contexts. Um, you know, not for ad blocking. If, if you're also responsible for your firm's website, you might realize that, oh, this pattern that I set up to find ads is also a great way to, to uh, find out which headers have nav bars in them and which don't, or which headers happen to be in a certain relationship to other elements and which don't, or which divs, or which cards, or which web components, right? Like there's a lot that can happen here. And there's power, there's power in just how far and wide you can cast your selectors nets um, that goes beyond a lot of previous uh, JavaScript solutions. Um, just remember to use great care with this great power. Like I said, if you're not careful with your with your has, you might end up selecting elements you didn't mean to um, in addition to the ones that you did. But, you know, with, with all of that, I really, the best is ahead. Um, I could have taken three times the amount of time we have here to talk about um, uh, has patterns, but I don't want to do that uh, because I would really like to get to the questions and answers. So thank you for your time and attention. Let's go to the Q&A.